everybody. So this video is an introduction to kinematics, which is the study of motion. And at this stage, we don't pay attention to what causes the motion. We'll do that later, which is dynamics. So let's start with some vocabulary. So first, position. So that's like the colloquial term, like where you are in space. Like my position is here, this dot. And it depends on your choice of coordinates. So let's say if I pick a coordinate system like this, then my position is here with respect to this origin. If I pick a coordinate system, like say over here, somewhere else, then my position would be different because now it's with respect to a different origin. But then for this, video, let's keep things one dimensional. So let's say if I pick a posi if I pick a coordinate system exactly like this, then the position is like that in one dimension. So in this example, only some X value because I picked the, or the origin so that it's like right in line with the horizontal axis and the units would be meters. SI units. I mean, you can also scale that up or down to kilometers or millimeters, or you can use inches, but the SI unit meter, so you should convert to meters if it's necessary. Okay, next vocabulary, displacement. So that is delta x. You say the word delta, meaning the difference, the difference of your position. So that's more like final minus initial. So for initial anything, we put the, a little zero here, which you can call not, like not means zero. So you can say x not, meaning initial position in this example, still meters. But notice that, let's say, my position is here in space, and then initially, and then later here. So displacement is look, where you end minus where you start. So this is my displacement. And notice that it has nothing to do with my choice of coordinates. If you pick coordinates over here, if you coordinates over here, right, that displacement will still be pointing in the same direction. Okay, so next vocabulary, average velocity. It's displacement over some change in time interval. So this is time. And this would be meters per second. Right, so like if I am here and then I move here, I take that displacement divided by however long it took. Okay. And let's get maybe a little more sophisticated. Let's say I have like say you're, you're driving, and this is position. Oh, sorry, position and time. So let's say you, let's say you're walking. So you, you're walking forward, and then you slow down, and then you stop, and then you kind of start walking backwards, and then you stop, then you start walking forward, and then you stop. So this is your position as a function of time. Average velocity will be something like, say, from this time here to this time here. What was your average velocity means? Right, this is your initial position, final position, initial time final time, right? So it's just the slope of this, 
right? Because it's your displacement divided by time. So that's average velocity. Next vocabulary, instantaneous velocity. Okay, so you don't need to say the word instantaneous. If you just say velocity, that implies instantaneous velocity. So that is more calculus version. So you take the limit of your average velocity, which is the same thing as saying the derivative. Right, so velocity is the derivative of your position, the time derivative. So for example, you say, okay, during your walking, like what was your instantaneous velocity at this time right here? Right, so then that's the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line. Right? That's what derivative, right? It's the slope of the tangent line at that point. Okay, and then next vocabulary, there is average acceleration. Average. Okay, so, and then this is just the change in your velocity over change in time. And then let me just continue this explanation. Then there is instantaneous acceleration. Again, you don't have to say the word instantaneous. If you just say acceleration, it implies instantaneous. And that is similar to instantaneous velocity, the calculus version. Let's take the limit as delta t goes to zero. In other words, the time derivative of the velocity. Okay, and then notice that since velocity is the time derivative of position and acceleration is the time derivative of velocity, acceleration is also the second derivative of position. Okay, and then the units here, meters per second per second. So meters per second squared. And that, the picture looks just like this, except instead of position, velocity. Okay. So let's tie everything together kind of calculus style. So if we have, let's keep everything in one dimension because <clears throat> position, displacement, it could be two dimensional, three dimensional, but let's just keep it one dimensional in the X direction. So say you have position X, then you have velocity. Let's just say just the X component and then you have acceleration A, but just the X component. Later we can deal with the Y component and the Z component and tie those all together into 2D or 3D. So this is the time derivative. This is the time derivative. Okay, so let's say you measure acceleration, how do you get velocity? Right, so if you have velocity, you just take a derivative to get acceleration. But if you're given acceleration, how do you get velocity? You gotta do the opposite, right? The inverse, you have to integrate. So if you know acceleration, you also know that it's this. So how do you get velocity? You do separation of variables. Move this on this side. So it'll look something like this. Right? Move this on that side. And then integrate. And then you can do like from initial to some final, so initial to final. Uh, and you can choose 
to basically start your watch at zero. So you can define the initial time to be zero. You don't have to, but you have that freedom just so that there are less things for me to write. Okay, so then you would have to integrate this function. So for now, let's make an assumption of constant acceleration. Okay, so let's, let's assume constant acceleration. This is not always true, right? It's just to make life simpler for now. And then later we can go back and say, okay, what if acceleration is not constant? So if, if acceleration is constant, we can pull this out of the integral, right? Just, just goes there. if we assume that. So then we have v t minus t naught, t. Right? And you can move this on the other side of the equation. There we go. Okay. And then if we want position, we know that velocity is dx dt. So then same separation of arrows, like move this on that side. So it looks more like this, right? And then you integrate. But then v is not a constant, right? We, we have to put that here. So it looks more like, it should be x. then we integrate, right, from somewhere to somewhere. Okay, so let's finish this. So this would look like v naught x t plus, and then you integrate this, so half like that. Okay, so let me write everything in one place. for constant acceleration, you have and okay, and you can just use these. You can just memorize this if you want and then just use them. Um, and I'll, I'll show one more equation that you can get from combining these two. So let's say like this is all you need, right? So for constant acceleration. If you wanted to, say you solve this for t and then substitute it here, then you could get another equation. So let's say I'll name these one and two. Okay, and you should try this yourself just for practice with algebra. So if I solve equation one for t, then it looks like this, right? And then I take that and substitute it there. All right, so then it'll look like let me move this on the other side already. V naught x t plus one half t squared. Okay, so I need to square that thing, so. And square the denominator squared. Okay, so, and then again, try this at home. Let's simplify this. Oh, this should be an equal sign, sorry. Okay, so let's multiply this through. Okay, 
Okay, and then let's multiply this through. Well, this is ax and ax squared, so that goes away. I mean, this goes away, right? And then we got vx squared. I'll, I'll just do all separate. 2vx v not x over 2, so those cancel. And then plus v not x squared over 2. Okay. And then all right so then I'll just write these separate also because like this these cancel each other and this is a negative and this is a positive half right so then these two become negative half Okay, so we got minus uh, minus one plus half is negative half, right? And then we got this one. Okay, so let's write it nicer. So v x squared. Okay. And then you can rearrange this however you want. Like you can move this on that side. And then leaving this. Or you can move this on this side. Like it's all the same, right? So. So it's like another equation that you derived from the other two. Okay, so we'll do some more practice using these equations next time. Okay, so I'll see you on the next video.